Hello, YouTubies. How you doing? Old Steve-O's over here at my out yard. And, uh, what do I got here? This is my little queen cell toting box here. Show you what I got here. Just a little cooler. This is a little sportsman cooler. A little El Cheapo. I got the foam in there with the holes in it for the cells. And I got two nice hot quart jars in there. Uh, I've got two. I'm going to swing by. When we leave here, I'm going to swing by Martin's and pick up the cells. He's got extra cells coming and they're in the incubator. So I'll put them in here and add them to my incubator. We'll hatch them out. I've got two... I got two virgins that are hatched out. I've had them hatched for now, I don't know, three or four days. I went ahead and marked them with my nice, 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 pretty, pretty, pretty pink marker. I'm marking these girls all pink. And I've got my little push down. I like, kind of like this little tool here. I made these up. You've seen me make these. A little piece of PVC pipe. I think this was one and a quarter inch pipe. And I had this really nice uh, veil material. So that thing works out slick. This thing ought to last for freaking years. I made about five of them. Uh, plan is here to go in and see what we got here. And... Uh, Hopefully, I got three queens, matey queens back in here. These were walkaways 30 days ago. I may have added a, I may have added a virgin to these, but whatever. We're going to, if I find a queen in here and she's laying, we're going to mark her. We're going to mark all these queens. I'm going to mark everything I got. Uh, this nice, pretty pink color. So I've got my two, I got three of these of my two frame beefies. We're going to see what we can rob here, put here, seal these up, take them to the house, put these frames in place of what we steal out of here. So that'll be, that'll be a good thing. Uh, so let me get the fi smoker fired up and let's go in here and see what we got. Yeah, okay guys, first one I opened up is looking good. Got eggs here. Got eggs in here. I don't see the queen yet. So I'm going to hunt through here and see if I can find this queen and we will mark her. And then we'll steal some of her goodies. This is a nice this is a nice frame here to steal. I've got lots of nectar up top. Of course I've been feeding these bees now. Keep that in mind. I'm feeding mm -hmm. these right along. This is all fresh stuff they put up here. We don't have a lot on this side. But that's okay. That'll give them room. That'll give the new uh, virgin a place to lay when, when she comes back, see, from her mating flight. So we got a good bit of bees here. I'm looking it over pretty religiously here. I don't want to, it's silly to steal one and put a virgin in here with the existing queen in here. I mean, you're defeating the purpose. You're wasting a queen if you don't find this queen in this box here. But this hasn't got a huge amount of bees on here to, uh, you know, I should be able to find this queen quite easily. Make sure you look at the end bars. She could be running around on this bottom bar here. And like I say, once I find her, once I find her, I will uh, mark her. So I'm gonna steal this one and put in my two framer.
keep hunting till I find her. Okay, guys, I've got a frame number two here. And the pattern looks good. I mean, this is a this is a brand new queen. She's just starting to lay here. She's not on this frame. I've looked it over quite well. She's not here. And so I've got three more frames. This this colony is really done nice. So this is kind of cool, guys. You can come in these fives like I'm doing. Rob you out two frames. You know, you could you could do a walk away here. Actually, as long as you've got some eggs in here, you could do a walk away, or you can start grafting like I'm going to be doing soon, and uh, set up a cell builder, and also find a queen that you like. This thing is really nice. I mean, these these are not aggressive bees whatsoever. Of course, they're a nice sunny area here. Uh, it's kind of dapple light, but it's still quite sunny here. This is a really laid-back colony. Uh, the way this girl here is laying eggs, I would, I would consider her a, uh, a breeder. I'm probably going to have a half a dozen or more that I would, by the day's end, I will probably figure out. Uh, I could have as many as half a dozen or more breeder colonies that I could use to rob larva from when I start grafting. So keep that in mind. Uh, but this is all you're gonna need for a two framer. Uh, two frames like this, this does not have much. Uh, it's got a little nectar up top, a uh, little bit on this one, but keep in mind I'm feeding these bees constantly. And I've got pollen sub uh, out in a feeder at the at back at the yard. I've also got a pollen sub feeder here as you can see here and the trick is on these pollen sub feeders add a jar of syrup to the right there by it that'll bring the bees in there to feed on your on the feed the liquid feed and plus all of a sudden they're gonna see your pollen feeder and they're gonna go aha He's fixing us up. So this is going to be great. We can, we this first hive here. Uh, if any, I have any failures here, I will probably just take them back to base camp and, and utilize these frames uh, to fill up other units. Because I'm going to be putting in, you know, I'm going to be putting in virgins in these two framers to get them going. And then we'll come back in three weeks We'll come back in three weeks after we install our virgins to see to see where they're at. So I have not found this queen yet. We're going to keep looking here. Yeah, okay, guys. Here's one of my uh, wire frames. You've seen me make these before. I mean, they've got a little drone action out here on the ends, but this is all beautiful. As you can see, let me get over in the light here. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with incorporating these wire frames in. And you can see here on the ends, I put in eyelets, the little brass eyelets in there. And uh, yeah, this, these, these frames are working out fine. Try to incorporate some of these in, save yourself some money on the plastocell. Uh, if you go out there and look, and you see I did a jig. Uh, on this where I take it's got a clamp it's, it's got it's, on my fixture there is a screw clamp uh, was it, it was a uh, actually it's a wood vise I, with a screw handle on a clamp what I'm trying to say a clamp and I took the clamp portion off and mounted on my jig to where I have a stop on this end two stops which are nothing more than two screws sunk in the in the fixture and then I start screwing this in and it puts a tension and bows this whole end bar inward and then I run my four wires you can see there's four wires put in the four wires I've tried cheating before and it, it ends up biting me in the ass run run and these are these are banjo string tight too banjo string tight 
And, and once you once you wrap your nails, you run them back and forth, back and forth, and you put your two nails in, which are right here. There's a nail here and a nail down there. And you pull them up tight. And then when you release the tension on the clamp, it really tightens that up. But don't try to put these together without the little brass eyelets because this this framing wire will cut right into the wood so you're you're losing tension there and uh, as you can see I mean it's a perfectly perfectly good comb and it's supported all the way to the bottom as you can see uh, with plasticell it's plugged into that bottom groove as you can see that bottom groove in that uh, frame well here the bees are telling us something the bees are telling us something here. Look at what they're telling us. They're telling us that they really don't care for that frame to reach all the way to the bottom bar. They like to crawl under there and come around. Instead of crawling around the end of that wood, which they do, as you can see. But every one of these string frames, you can see there's daylight there. And some places they do tie it in. This one here doesn't look like they did at all because they didn't feel like they needed to because of that bottom wire. So run four, if you're going to do this, run four wires. This would be a good one to steal also, but I'm not going to steal it. This is going back in. I have what I need now in this two frame box. I have what I need in here. I've stole all I'm going to need. I don't see a queen here. I'm going to look on a these other two frames and see if I can find the queen and mark her. I'm not going to waste a lot of time looking for her. I did spend good time on looking for the queens in this box that I'm stealing and I didn't see them. But I'm going to look through. Sometimes these queens are darker, especially the carnolians. They're darker queens and they just blend in with the flock and it's hard to tell. As you can see, I've got, I've got black, black bees here. I've got yellow bees. I've got a mixture. They're Florida mutts is what I have. Florida mutts. Everybody asks me, what kind of bees you got, Steve? I said, I got Florida mutts. They got a little bit of everything in them. So, yeah. But I just wanted to show you this wire frame. These are absolutely doable. Okay, guys, just found my queen. I got down to the second to the last frame. This is the last frame. I don't need to pull that frame for any reason. Yeah, but here's my queen here. I just got her marked. I'm letting her blowing on a little bit. I got her marked good. And there she is. She's looking good. See how that, that uh, color stands out, guys? stands out very well I like it I like it all right we're done here all I got to do I'm gonna put a plane on the outside move this over put a plane here and we'll move on to the next one okay on the entry side which is over there I'm gonna put a be fresh beetle barn and I'm gonna put another amatraz towel back here only a half half of a towel for five frames, a full towel for 10. And uh, once I eat this towel up, then, then we'll see, I'll do another alcohol wash and see where we're at. But I'm not gonna fool with, I'm getting sticky here too, honey all over me. I carry a little water with me too, keep my hands rinsed off. And uh, I will throw on some rubber gloves and I'll come back through all these and quickly put a towel down and put the lid on then I can I like to work barehanded with my bees if I can if they're not too vicious Today's a nice day So I like working barehanded. I haven't taken a sting yet You just move, you know slowly and methodically Don't get too nuts with the smoke Just nice cool smoke is what they like. They don't want to be hammered with hot smoke so, you know, you utilize your smoke uh, accordingly, otherwise you're going to piss off bees. And so, I'm done in here. We've, we've made one nuke. 
all right two framer uh, granted I've got to these tip over easily two in the back of the truck I didn't tie these down when I came over here no need to I mean but they were all up, turned over when I got here frames were hanging out of them everything mm -hmm. so when I get ready to make the move these are going to get lashed down to the side of the truck too so don't be taking these two throwing on a truck and hauling ass because you're going to have them upside down and, and just you know have a freaking mess so anyway little tips and tricks from old steve-o i mean none of this is rocket science but it's amazing how many people will screw it up you know all right let me get let, let me get on here i probably won't do any more uh video in here in this yard but you see what i'm doing and this little tool here works this little homemade marker queen marker tool works absolutely hunky-dory you don't want it too thick you don't want it too thick as you can see that's only about a quarter inch thick and uh and i cut a bevel on it you can see a little bevel i cut on that thing so it actually smashes into the wax so you can pin your queen right down now if you had any taller than this, she'd be running around. You really have to smash this thing clear to the center line to get her pinned down. But you go easy, and this soft material gives. So you're not going to crush her or hurt her with this material. This material came off of a, a, a veil, an old veil. And it's a soft material, the one that's on the bottom. Actually, this came from a square veil. And it was a perfect size hole to mark your queens through it. So, anyway little tip trick from steve -O on that all right i'm going to go through here and finish this job up and so i can hustle because i can't hustle when i'm talking to you guys so you know what i'm up to okay guys i'm on my last colony here and uh, i was i was fortunate enough i found all the queens and uh, here's the last queen here i just marked her we'll lift that up there you go She's not uh, hurting at all. She's got a big old yellow butt on her. So she's an Italian. Funny guys, I married a uh, I married Italian. I married a northern Italian. And they've got really um she, she's got she's uh light colored hair. She's got blue eyes. And her butt is not yellow. Uh -uh. She's got a nice white butt on her, but don't tell Miss Daisy I told you that, okay? But anyway, all these girls here have got yellow butts. All my Italian girls have yellow butts here in the bee world. Yeah, all the northern, she's a northern Italian, my, my Miss Daisy, and they have, uh, they have bl blue eyes usually, not always. She has siblings, she has siblings, and they're, they're all brown eyed, so, anyway, I happen to have found a blue eyed, blonde skinned northern italian they're not bad to have until you piss them off uh just just like in a bee world once you piss them off guys <laughs> katie bar the door okay because you, you know you don't you don't want to piss them off all right all right what have i got left here this hive is a little pissy too these are pissy little bitches now uh they're over here in more shade but uh, I took about five or six hits from these little pissy bitches. But that ain't bad. I mean, they ain't covering me up. Now, if this thing was in a, this was in a fat 10, 10 frame hive, you know, blowed out with bees, you might be looking at a different scenario here. So anyway, I've got, what have I got here? I've got a, I've got a plugged up beetle barn. This one needs to go in for cleaning. I'm gonna put a fresh one on. I'm gonna put it toward the front end. I'm gonna put me an amatraz back here, half an amatraz towel back here. That's what's left of the old one. 
but it's probably getting played out. So I'll give them a fresh one. And uh, the bees are looking healthy. I didn't see any cripple wing virus or none of that shenanigans. So they got two frames now they can fill up. I'll keep them on full food supplementation. So we're going to knock out the mites. I didn't, haven't not seen a beetle in these hives, guys. None. Knock on wood. I have not seen one. But I think the reason I'm not seeing them because I'm keeping down the varroa mites. I'm keeping them to a manageable level. I honestly think when these hives are about to collapse, with colony collapse disorder, it's due to the fact you've got a serious mite load. From my experience, I may be totally off, off with this. It's just is my thought. Leave a comment below what you think. Always comment below, because I don't know everything. Can you believe it, guys? I don't know everything. As long as you guys have been hanging out with me, it's true. I do not. And to confirm that, just ask Miss Daisy. She'll tell you. Oh, trust me. She'll say, oh, Steve-O does not know everything. No, he don't. She, she'll probably say something. It's amazing that somebody hasn't taken him out of the food chain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway... Yeah, I, uh, I, that's my thought on this, beetles. These, this is a nice little tool here. These aren't a bad way to go. Those oil trap things, uh, you, you put vegetable oil in them, you, you spill it, you, you're killing bees, you're killing larvae, you're kill, you know, wherever you spill it, you're killing bees. Veggie oil, not a good thing at all. It's dumping crap all over the house. You put these in. Now, I've been putting these in now, guys, with no ro roach bait in here at all. These bees will chase these, these high beetles into these little barns, and then they seal them up. They entomb them. And they'll look like Egyptian mummy soon. Okay? That's what the bees do. They'll entomb them in there. You can see that one's propolis up. That one's just about totally propolis. That one's a little bit open. That one's a little bit open, but they're working on it change these out my experience is change these out monthly yes keep your keep your varroa mites levels knocked down okay they don't need the extra burden of all these parasites running around in here and they're they're loaded with viruses too and you're just you contaminate your your precious beehives we don't need these precious little girls they've got enough work to do without being overloaded with friggin garbage okay so keep your keep your bees clean and healthy all right and amatraz works uh so far knock on wood knock on wood all right that's it for this yard like i say i'm going to get a fresh beetle barn put on here and i'll put a little amatress towel at the back of the hive so as they shred it they carry it out on a 45 degree angle dragging it across all of that brood taking out varroa mites we don't want them they are a pain in my ass and my girls too the girls have told me this yeah sometimes i put a stethoscope on the hive and listen and they talk to me and they tell me the, their problems yeah mm-hmm just like Miss Daisy tells me her problems. Oh, I got something cool to show you. I'll show you maybe next video. I got Miss Daisy very, very happy, guys. I mean, very happy. You're going to like this. Expensive. Expensive little deal, but I got her happy. You're going to like it. She, she likes it. Okay, guys, back in here in the bee lab. Just went over to uh, Martin's and I got some more cells from him. We got 10 more cells. We've got two virgins in here now. I picked up from the other day. I marked them. And here's what I like to do here with these cells. I like to put them into... 
these cell protectors. Because see, they fit in so nicely. These cells, look at all the royal jelly still in this. Nice peanuts. So they fit in here so nice. If you just take a cell and try to shove it in this California Mini, you're going to damage this cell. But if you put them in a cell protector and then stick them in, you stick them in like that, now you've got a good deal. He had an extra cell here, and I put that that uh, cell in there. It doesn't have a cell uh, cap on it. He, this was a swarm cell. And he, st he stuck it inside of there. I'm going to put, hopefully it'll hatch. I opened it up. There's a viable, viable uh, larva in there. So anyway, I'm going to load this up. And uh, I gave Martin one of my queen. These things work good. These little queen pinner downer dealies. And I made a little pouch here on the side of my, my uh, holder here. My tool belt with all my stuff on and I left, I made the pouch where the this lip's sticking up, where I can grab it easily and pull it out. So that's that works pretty slick. All right, I'm gonna load up all these in here and get these back. I'm gonna feed these two girls here, and uh, I'll show you how I do that in a minute. <laughs> all right, guys, what I use, a little bamboo skewer, I cut it down, and I just dip it in the honey. This is the way I've been doing it, feeding the bees. I let it drip off, and I put one drop over here on the side of the cage. One drop there. Another drop here. Let it drip off one drop, and then paint it on. Paint it on the screen. I like using these California minis for hatching, hatching my virgins. And now for I want to give them a drink of water. So what I do is take a bottle, bottle of water, and I take a long skewer. I got a long skewer like this, and I dip it down in there deep, and I bring it up, and I, I set that right there on the side. And that water runs down the skewer to what gives you a nice, nice drop right there, see? And that's it. And I just got a little cage here I use as a holder to hold that up. And I keep my honey, I keep my feed, this is raw honey. Actually, I've had this going on I think three years now, this one jar. And I keep it in the incubator and keep it warm in here. So yeah, we're keeping this at 94 degrees, and uh, those these two virgins will be going in those two frame splits I made yesterday. So let's go out here and see if our Mark virgins came back. I've got some two framers out here. Let's go out and see if our Mark virgins came back and they're laying now. Here's what I did with my boxes, guys going from my out yard back to base camp here. I just run it over. I tie this off too. I got some number 30 tarred nylon here. I tie off my feeder bucket and I ran it through a rope. Trucker's hitch pulled it over up against the side of the truck. You don't want these things flopping around the back of the truck. So anyway, we're going to offload these. I'm going to peel the top back. I'm going to set a feeder on them. We're going to come back in 24 hours and we're going to put virgins in here or a cell. If I don't have an extra virgin popping, uh, we'll just put a cell in one and let it go like that. Some of the problems you get into with these little smaller hives is this action right here. And this is just flat out ass robbing uh what we're gonna do here i'm gonna shut this i'm gonna shut this nozzle down right here nobody can get in now they're trying to squeeze in the cracks everywhere they can 
they don't see where they they can't get in that crack right there but let's just take this colony right over here change things up a little bit I'll come back open this up in the morning see here all these bees in here I got a hunch they've just they've just robbed this baby out yeah I think they've hammered this hive out I'm not even gonna look in here right now just leave it like it is check out some of these other ones we have to do it fairly quickly though because you see they're already in rob mode robbing mode <coughs> they're fighting wherever they can to get in we're in a dearth right at the moment and they're trying everything they can to steal food from their from their other hives not good not good at all it's a nice little fat colony right here let's give them a little puff of smoke and go in here all of these are our virgins that I marked these are all virgins that I marked They should be laying by now. Here's the here's the cage. That's the Jay Z B Z cage. You remember we did those. Get the sunlight to see what we can see. There she is. Look how pretty, look how nice it is to see these queens, guys, that, with that mark on it. Now that's carnolian right there. See how, how dark her butt is? Yeah. She may even have a, she may even have a touch of a Caucasian in her. She is laying. She is laying, guys. I'm going to come back tomorrow, guys. Queen right. She's looking good. Nice dark queen. She's almost got a Caucasian in there to me. She's very dark. These bees are a little cranked up right now, guys. I'm not going to fool with them right now. I'm going to let them rest and come back in the morning while it's cool and we'll go through there and see what kind of uh, results we had. But the first one I checked, you can usually tell. You, you know, you open them up, you open them up, and see, like this one, it's just, they're all just chilling in there. They're just chilling. This one's very weak. It may have gotten robbed out. Quite a few bees in there, they're chilling. Here's a very weak uh, two. I turned this five into a two framer. 
but I filled out with planes on the outside. And you can see I turned this way down, the hole way down. These, these two hives here uh, got virgins also. And I think I put a virgin in that far one over there also. But you can see they're in heavy robbing mode right now. And I just don't want to go into them right now. Uh, we're just going to have start a robbing scenario from hell here. So that's it for now. I'm going to go in. I think I'm going to go inside and show you what I bought Miss Daisy. You're going to love this. Alrighty guys, this is what we got in this daisy right here. Look at this thing. This is a camphor tree. This was a camphor tree. Look at this thing, guys. This camphor tree is 56. 56 long. 44. 44 inches wide and it's two and three quarters thick camphor there was the center of the hole right here here's you see these marks this is where tree limbs were coming out like four big tree limbs coming out of this thing and it's still you can still smell the camphor coming out this is a long process this thing takes you're looking about two years on this of drying time. They have to dry it slow. And uh, this came out of Tarpon Springs, Florida. The tree, I think, came was from Tarpon Springs, Florida. And he cut it. He got several slabs out of this huge tree. And he put it in the kiln. They have to dry it out first they dry it outside of his warehouse they stack them up and they let them dry under some sort of covering they get little cracks in them but this is all filled with a, a colored epoxy just like this hole was this was the center of the tree and actually that portion of it when it was drying it fell out that piece but all these little cracks he fills all these cracks and they seal it and they also plane the bottom too this thing he said large pieces he has a guy that does he's got a big CNC machine they flatten it they flatten the bottom and the top and underneath what he does he could does what they call spider legs spider legs this is pretty cool setup here what he does this you can see, and you got four attachment points, and there's four screws in each one of those points. Yeah. And each one of those, so it's pretty cool. It's just a stable, and you can get, you know, you don't have issues with a spider leg. You don't have issues with uh, your feet getting under here. He also did this bench for me. Uh, about two years ago on this bench this was a log that was laying in a river and I'm not really sure what wood this is but you can see all the wormholes and stuff in the wood of course when they pulled it out and they 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 cut the wood mill it then they heat it they put it in and they kill all of the critters that were into the material. Miss Daisy found these little log slab pillows. Pretty cool. They kind of go along with the whole deal here. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you this. It's, uh, he takes the, it's called Live Edge. It's called Live Edge, but they take the, uh, down to the cambium layer here. This is the cambium layer on this log. And they fill any 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 imperfections in the wood, they fill them. And it's got a uh, coat on it. It's not an epoxy. It's a, it's a uh, it's a food type grade material they put on there. 
but you can still smell this thing. I wish we had smell a vision because this is it's not strong. It's a, it's a eucalyptus type, you know. You know, Vicks vapor rub smells. It's camphor. It's like a Vicks vapor rub smell to it. It's a really pleasant smell to this table. I mean, it's really cool. So had to show you this trick here. Miss Daisy loves it. I love it. And that's it for today, guys. I'll see you on the next one. We'll get out here soon. I want to check all those. We checked one. One of our virgins came back that we marked before she went on our mating flight. She's back here now, laying up a storm. So maybe the drones like my hot pink that I put on her, on her thorax. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.